Hi guys, welcome back to the Yarn and Cave. My name is Brenda, the newbie crocheter, and in this video, we're gonna get caught up with what I've been doing, what I've finished, what I have, what I have not finished, and just some odds and ends. So let's get started. <laughs> again to the Yarny Cave. My name is Brenda, the newbie crocheter, and this is my cave. This is where everything happens, and this is where I spend 99.9% uh, .9 of my time when I'm not at the office. So um, this video is just going to be what I've been up to, what I have finished, what's going on in my life, what's going on here in Central Florida. It is Saturday, September 24th. Uh, it is uh, 10 a.m. in the morning and we here in Central Florida and most of Florida is preparing for potential Hurricane Ian. So that's part of our, um, that's part of what happens when you live in the state and so we just have to just keep an eye on the weather and uh, do what we can to prepare as best as we can and, and then just leave it in God's hands because ultimately he's the one who has the last word. So, uh, but once again, thank you. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the notification bell. You don't want to miss anything that happens here. It is a very laid back channel. We don't, um, um, you know, it's just information, fun, things that we do together, tutorials. It's just a little bit of everything. We do some woodwork. You see some of it behind us. Um, so my husband and I do some woodwork as well. Um, so we do a little bit of everything, but mainly it's crochet and yarn. And I wanted to kind of come on because I haven't put a video in a couple weeks and let you know what I've been up to. So let's get started with this beauty here. And this beauty is a top that I finished and actually I, already, I wore it to work already. And um, I laundered it. And it is uh, done, basically it's two panels. It's a very simple uh, two square panels. I didn't want it too long, I wanted it more like uh, to the waist. And then um, I attached sleeves and a simple easy peasy, easy peasy uh, pattern. It's not any, um, any one particular pattern, it was just putting panels together basically. I did use a stitch called the loopy stitch. This is what it looks like. This I got this from the Crochet Stitch Bible. If you're not familiar with this book, this is in, available through Amazon, and uh, this is the stitch that I used. The loopy stitch. So um, it's pretty simple, it's basically um, uh, two treble crochet space, um, sorry, two treble crochets, chain, one double crochet. You skip uh, one, two, three chains, and you continue basically the same thing. So it's, uh, it's almost like an upside down um, granny stitch with a little bit of a twist. I thought it's, I wanted something that had somewhat coverage, but it was airy once again, for those of you who haven't caught on already. I do live in Central Florida. It is really hot here. This particular yarn, I'll tell you what it is right now. Hence the reason too why I made it so airy. Um, it is... I'm coming, guys. I'm coming. I'm coming. It is James C. Brett Northern Lights. One ball, one shawl. I didn't do a shawl, of course. I did a top. And it is 492 yards of 95% premium acrylic and 5% viscose, which is the little flex that you see. Now, I've already laundered this. I wore it and I laundered it. And I even I put it in the dryer uh, for a good a good portion of before it was completely dry and then I hung it it was almost fully dry and then I hung it here I put it on this on the on Loretta which is the name of my my mold here um, I don't like calling it a dummy because she's not a dummy um, to finish drying and it, it worked out perfectly and I've told you guys before I'm a wash and wear kind of girl I don't like 
hand washing stuff. I mean, there will be maybe an item here or there that I do hand wash. But I'm a very, like I said, laid back channel. This is all about easy peasy, nothing difficult, um, wash and wear. And even if I've dedicated a long time to an item, I will still put it in the washer and test it out. And if it doesn't come through uh, in one piece, then it's my loss and I'll kick myself for it and move on. But I want an item that I can wear and I'm not afraid to wear. And that's the reason why I do what I do. So, I mean, I, it's almost to me, it's the same sense as creating something just to look at it. I don't want to look at it. I want to wear it. I want to use it. I want to show it off. I want people to see my makes and, and, and not only me enjoy wearing them, but them enjoy seeing it as well. So, that's the reason I do what I do. So, if you ask me how I launder it, I'll tell you how. This is the mesh bag that I use to launder my items. It's pretty solid and in fact it's got little fuzzies in here because if it loses its fuzziness it doesn't go all over the place it stays right in here and I can show you because it will lose a little bit of fuzz we all know that this is some of the fuzziness that was in here so I just throw that out and so I wash it here I wash, put it in my in my um in my laundry bag I close it and it's got a seal not a seal but you kind of stick the, the zipper in this little compartment here so it doesn't open up in the washer and like I said it's pretty solid mesh it's not an open mesh it's pretty solid <clears throat> and uh, I put it in the washer with close like the colors, you know, if it's something like this, I'll probably put it with um, with uh, medium colors or, or or just regular colors. And um, once I put the clothes in the dryer, I will put it in the dryer in this mesh bag as well. Now, the only difference is, is that I will take it out probably uh, 20 minutes or 25 minutes into the dryer. And then I will um, put it on Loretta to finish drying. And that way, um, it's partially dry, it's just maybe a little bit damp. I'll put it here, turn on the fan, and in a few hours, it's completely dry, ready to be used. So I'm pleased that um, it was uh, came out in one piece. I did snag it here, but that was me wearing it with my uh, bracelet. I need to try to fix that, see how I can fix that, but aside from that, very happy with the way it turned out, very happy with the way it laundered, and it's still very, very soft. So if you're afraid to launder something, or it's something that you wear and you need to launder it and you don't have the space to hand wash anything like I don't, then I recommend you go ahead and just buy yourself one of these and just test it. Put it in the, uh, put it in the gentle cycle first and then um, look at it, open it up once it's done, look at it and... That's just my idea, but you do what you feel you need to do, okay? So, yeah, so this piece was completed. Like I said, I wore it, I laundered it, and it's still in one piece. Another piece that you guys have seen is this one. This is a, um, um, a crop party that I made. It is by MJ Off The Hook. It is a great pattern. And I love it. I've already worn it a couple times. It's already been laundered as well using the same method. And as you see, it's still in one piece, including the buttons, which I made myself. They're made out of polymer clay. They fare very well in the washer and in the dryer. Like I said, I put it in the washer. Oh, excuse me. I put it in the washer. I put it um, in the bag as well in the dryer for just 20, 25 minutes. And then I... Put it on Loretta so it can finish drying and um, it still fared perfectly fine and I'm getting ready to make not right now but probably in a um, in a few weeks I'm probably gonna start working on another one and I've decided to use the 24-7 cotton in this gray let me see if I can open one back here I've never used this cotton. It is mercerized cotton. It does feel a little bit on the rough side. It is chain spun. 
um, hence the reason why I decided to use it. Since it's a, since it's a cardi, I want something that's going to be strong and sturdy. I usually wear something underneath it, so the fact that it's a little bit on the hard side, it doesn't matter to me. Plus, I know that once you wash it and, and dry it, it will usually soften up. But I've chosen, once again, 24-7 in the color silver. It's got um, 107 meters, 186 yards. It's a number four. And it calls for a four millimeter hook. And this is the color that I've chosen. So, um, God willing, things all work fine with the, with the pattern again. I, I'm, once again, I'm going to probably take my time in doing it because I want a, a project this big. And once again, like I told you before, I wear my makes. So um, I want to make sure that it is correct and I don't have to end up frogging or, or, or getting rid of it because it didn't come out the way that I wanted to. So take my time and hopefully, God willing, we'll have another one that I can just wear to work. Um, uh, wear anywhere, really. I can, you know, I've worn this at, to the office with a, with an under, with a shirt and uh, the fact that it is holy is hairy, not hairy, airy. I can um, wear it here, uh, even during the summer. My office is quite cold, and the hotel where I work is quite cold everywhere, except when you work in the exteriors. And so I always have to have a sweater of some sort. So this worked out great, and I hope that the gray turns out just as nice. So wish me luck, guys. So yeah, I put this back. And put this back. Now, some people have asked about the wood caddies. Right now, I only have two wood caddies available. So let me go back a little bit and explain what's going on here. Uh, well, my husband and I also have a landscaping company. And our busy season with the landscaping company is from April through November. And uh, during those months, my husband works every week, basically seven days a week. Well... Technically, he should be working five days a week, but he always ends up working almost seven days a week. So uh, once the winter, our winter season kicks in, um, in the landscaping world, come November through uh, March, April, um, he works only one week on, one week off. So basically, he only does um, grass runs once every two weeks. So that gives him a lot of uh, free time, and that's when we start working on our woodwork keeps him busy in his off his off weeks so um, right now we have just two caddies available that are um, that are available right now they're identical they hold um, two four six eight times three twenty four hooks they do not they're not big they're not big enough for furls hooks they're just big enough for your standard hooks um, and some with uh, ergonomic handles, but not big enough for furls. Just giving you a heads up. The ones that I have for furls are gone. I think I gave one in a giveaway, and I, and the other ones were sold. So, so I have these two. If anybody's interested, just send me an email at Brenda the Crochet at gmail.com. Brenda the Crochet at gmail.com. Basically, my channel name at gmail.com, and I will let you know what the price is with shipping. The pricing that I had in in my about page, um, it's probably tweaked because that's been there from from the very beginning, and we all know that shipping costs have skyrocketed. So it may be a little bit more than what you see in that in that list if you choose to go by what's on that list. Um, let's see what else is going on. So I did um, take a little run the other day to. To dollar, um, to Dollar Tree, um, and I go there just to buy. I don't. I've only bought yarn once from Dollar Tree, and once again, I, and I bought yeah a couple times actually. I bought some cotton, which I have plenty of. Have not used it all. And when the acrylic first came out, I did get some, and I made some blankets for um, for um, Dana. Uh, what's her channel name? I can't remember right off the bat, but it was um, not Dana from Creative Leaf Creative Crochet, but um, Dana was doing, a, uh, there was another Dana uh, that was, she was doing a drive for um, 
the veterans and I made uh, a, a, a blanket and some other stuff for her with that yarn and um, and I used it all up so hold on a second and so um, and I liked the yarn but once again it's acrylic it was going out of state so it didn't bother me and so I, I really try not to work too much with acrylic I do have still some um, this one I made um, this is the reason why I made um, I used acrylic for this one but it's because this yarn I actually ordered from the UK and I wanted to really test it out and I do like it it's very drapey it's very very soft and I wanted to really test um, the yarn out and it's lovely it's really beautiful yarn I love the colorway and I love the flag so it was good but um let's see something here hold on um, trying to find Dana's channel Dana's from Wanderlust Crochet that's who it is that's who it was and so um And so we went ahead and, and made some stuff for her and sent it out. And I love the way it really worked out. It was very, um, very soft. And uh, I enjoyed working with it. I really did enjoy working with it. Mm, let's see. Okay, so. Uh, but yeah, so I went to the Dollar Tree. Heading back to what I was saying. I went to the Dollar Tree and um, I found this it is a 350 piece uh, puzzle of yarn and I think I opened it up to see because the, the box was a little jacked up and I wanted to kind of make sure I had everything in here and it was there was a bag in here and it was sealed with all the um, pieces and I um, went ahead and then fixed the box up so I will eventually do this I'm hoping that I can do this and have it um, glued and maybe put it in a in a um, in a frame and put it here in the in the yarny cave. So this this um, this puzzle was uh, a buck twenty five. So I thought it was super cute. I think here's the full picture of what it looks like. It's the rainbow colors, and it was just a dollar twenty five. And for something like this, you can do, and, and, and if you can find a place to do it, I have a big table here I can I can do it on, and um, then glue it together and uh, put it up in a, in a picture frame. I think it would be awesome. So I got that pending. So I got that. I did take a ride over to um, uh, Michael's not too long ago, and I did put a little uh, short in my, in my YouTube channel showing you that the... Um, anniversary cakes were back and has some new colors and I picked up this I didn't pick up any yarn but I did pick up this little bag this little uh, bag they had others there but um, I didn't want I don't know if they're called uh, Chinese handle or or I don't know what it's called but I, I just said they only had one with a drawstring and I just picked the one and I think it was on clearance I think I paid a dollar or something and then I pay, I bought these prim needles. Yes. I don't know who it is. Let's see. Oh, so my friend neighbor um donates clothes. Maxie, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Anyways, they um donate clothes and they, they've come to um pick up the uh, the donations so I bought these prim uh, needles uh, there are I don't know much about any anything but it's a seven millimeter um, needles they were on clearance I believe for three dollars I bought them because I'm going to try to learn how to knit and I am going to I, I hide my face because I've tried before and my my fingers don't want to do the work my fingers don't want to move according to what I need, but I'm still going to try once again. And I'm going to follow Miss Linda Simpson, who is uh, has a great channel. 
She is um, uh, from the UK and she does both crochet and knitting and she is just an amazing <clears throat> artist. She, anyways, I, I cannot say enough wonderful things about her. She is just, in my opinion, outstanding. <clears throat> and I want to go ahead and, and, um, and eventually open these up and I'm going to be following her tutorial on how to knit and I'm going to give it another shot. So um, I got these and that's it. That's all I picked up from the Dollar Tree. This and some other stuff that I got like candles and stuff that I get and um, and this from Michaels. So yeah, I did go shopping but didn't spend too much. And so I also ordered some uh, hooks from Amazon just to kind of test them out and, and play around with them. And I'll show you what I got. <coughs> I got these, and I'm sure many of you have seen them. They're double-sided uh, crochet hooks. Um, size. This one is size A10. Then you have a size. Well, let me go back. Eight millimeter and ten millimeter, basically, according to this. But this is, I believe, I think these are. Um, not millimeters but sizes you know how sometimes you have the letter um for instance let me get another hook and show you and let me see if i'm right in this hold on let me find okay so this is another hook that I that I purchased. This is a 6.0 millimeter, but do you see how it says the size 10? So I believe that this 10, it says 10 on this side and size 8 on this one. So I believe this is a 6 millimeter and this is a 5 millimeter. So it's not in millimeter sizes but in numerical sizes so which kind of stinks because I'm not very familiar with those sizes but it is what it is okay let me see if I can figure this out hold on a second guys. I'm gonna refer to my other set that I just got so I can figure out this set that I'm talking about now okay this is nine Seven and a half, eight. I'm coming, guys. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll be right there. Four, ten, and seven. Okay. So this, for instance, says it is a seven point five and a nine point oh. So 7.5 on this end is 4.5 millimeter and a 9.0 is a 5.5 millimeter. I'm going to have to write down this chart because if I use these, I'm not going to know what is what. And this one is almost um, worn out, but it's 2.0 and 3.0. And a 2.0 is a 2 millimeter and a 3.0, I want to say, is a 2.5 millimeter. Not a 2.5, a 2.25 millimeter. Then this one is a 4, uh, size 4 and size 6. So this is a 2.5 millimeter on this side. And size 6 is a 3.5 millimeter on this side. And then this is size 5 and 7, as you can see. So 5 is 3.0 millimeter, and 7 is 4.0 millimeter. So yeah, they do have sizes, but they are numerical sizes. They're not millimeters, and they're not letter sizes. They're numerical sizes. And for us, this, I think it's very little confusing, because I think that's the least, that's the one way that we really don't refer to hooks but they do have their sizes and 
I figured for somebody like going on a trip that doesn't want to take a whole handful of hooks, this may be a good option. So that's why I got those. And then I bought this set. Let's see how I show you the set without oh, put it back in the bag. That's the best way to do it. I'll keep one out and I will put those back in here so I can show you. I got this set they have this little it is hard plastic they do have the size in the bottom and this section here is rubberized so um, that's what the reason why I decided to buy it and actually I tested it yesterday and it's not bad for me it's not bad because that's how I hold my hook and my finger falls exactly in that little rubberized portion it is very light. It is a boy style hook. And these have the numerical sizes and the millimeter sizes. Not the letter size, but the numerical size and the millimeter size. And that's how I was cheating to try to tell you which ones those other ones were. But I'm going to test them out a little bit more. I just tested them out briefly yesterday in a project that I just finished. Sorry, let me let me go ahead and mute my phone. Give me one second. I have somebody texting me nonstop here and I'm just going to mute it for a minute. So, yeah. So they are all different colors, including the, the hook portion, the metal portion. They're very pretty and they're very light. I don't have very big hands, so it's it's not an issue for me. But I'll, I'll put one of the other ones, like the purple one. And like I said, this is hard plastic, but this portion here is rubberized. So it, it feels really soft and it's very smooth rubber. So um, I'm curious to test them. Not inexpensive. I think the set was like $11 for the whole thing. You know that you can get hooks from Amazon inexpensively. And it's just for fun. Just to test them out. See how they do. See how they fare. And then I bought this other set. It's a little bit disappointing because they do look a little bit, um, they feel a little bit cheap. I mean, these are hard plastic, and this is hard plastic, but they just kind of feel a little bit different. And this is a set also that resembles another popular set, but they are in jewel tone, not jewel tone colors, but in pastel colors. And this is what I'm talking about. This portion here, once again, it is rubberized. This here is also plastic, but the plastic on here and the other plastic feels a little different and these all the the hook part is all in silver and once again it does have the shape of a um, boy hook the way that I hold my my hook once again it fits fine in my hand so I'm gonna give it a fair shot and test them out and see how they fare I like to play with different different hooks and not only that but sometimes the way that I hold my my hook I tend to really put a lot of pressure on my thumb right here and that's the, the the spot that gets exhausted the quickest so um, I was looking for hooks that maybe I could um, maybe relieve some of that and so I ordered these these I believe were also $11 and change um, to kind of test them out and see I'll test them out see if I like them if I don't think I'm going to like them, then I will just put them in a giveaway and have you guys, uh, uh, bless one of you guys with them. I know that what I like and use may not be the same as what you like and you use. So, you know, we all have our preferences in, 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 in reference to hooks and even yarn. So, um, you know, I would love, I like blessing people. If I'm not going to use something, I'd rather bless somebody else with it and have somebody else give, give it good use than just keep it here collecting dust. I don't want to do that. And finally, um, well, before I do finally, one last thing that I just completed last night, and it was something that my sister, I have an older sister, five years old, five years older, not five years old. 
Sometimes we wish we were five years old again, but no. She's five years older, and she has asked me for to gift her, to make for her and gift her, either for birthday or Christmas, what is called a rosary prayer shawl. It is a free pattern by girliescrochet.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually link it uh, in the bottom of this video so that you can refer to it should you be interested in it. But it is, she does have a link within her video. She does have a tutorial. But within the video, she has a link where you can get the written pattern. Should you prefer to just get that and follow that. It's a very simple pattern. It is a very beautiful pattern. My sister wanted it in a brown tone. I showed her the yarn that I have, and she chose one that I think was nice. It's a little bit busy, but I still think it came out very nice. And I will show you um, the shawl. The only difference is, is that this one has tassels, and the one... Because my sister is short in stature, we did not feel the tassels was the best thing for her. So we did not put tassels on that one. I did make it a little bit longer than the pattern indicated, but I did not put tassels. But this is this is the shawl. Once again, I'm going to link the free the tutorial, the YouTube tutorial, and I'm going to also um um I'm not gonna link this pattern because within the tutorial the um, the YouTube tutorial if you go to the information you have the link for this so the link is within the link so that's what I finished yesterday for her this is the yarn that I use Karen Simply Soft in this beautiful it's called actually um, Woodland Camo sorry for the crinkling I'll just clear out really quick it is a um, very soft. It is Karen Simply Soft. It is a size 4. It has is 100% acrylic. Once again, it's called Woodland Camo. It's got 100, um, sorry, 204 yards in each um, skein. And this is what the color looks like. It's beautiful shades of brown, a little bit of... Um, um, rust color maybe not so much rust but more like a like a a vibrant rusty brown uh taupes creams uh beautiful beautiful color um it is a busy yarn but i think for what what it was i think it, it will work out fine because my sister does not like um she doesn't like sorry guys give me a second let me get this out of here my sister prefers uh, colorful things, even in yarns, because I've taught her how to crochet, even in yarns that she purchases, she doesn't like to um, use solid colors. She says it gets bored really quickly, so she likes to use yarns with many colors that keep her entertained and keep her guessing what colors are going to come next, which I think is the case for many of us. So I went ahead and did her rosary prayer shawl with that one. She has not seen it yet. I'll give you guys a sneak peek. I know she's probably going to watch this, so it's okay if she sees it. But, as you guys know, I put everything in, once I'm done in plastic, in these plastic resealable bags. I bought these new ones that are a little bit bigger. Maybe too big. But it is what it is. Let me put this over here. And this is the shawl. I actually added a shawl pin in here for her. So that if she wanted to close it up, she could. And let me see if I can... This is the shawl. Now I put this added this pin, this shawl pin, in case if you know if it's a little on the chilly side and she wants to close it, she can she can just um close the shawl, give her a little bit more protection, close the shawl, but I also added a little um Virgin Mary metal to the right side front that she can touch. Let me see if you guys can see it. 
she doesn't know I did this, but she'll probably see this anyways. And it's actually in the front right hand. She's right-handed. And it's a place that she could hold on to or touch as she's also, you know, doing her rosary. I hope she likes that. I don't know. I didn't ask her if that was something that was uh, something I should do or not, but I still did it. And uh, I think it's really lovely. She is quite on the short side, so I have to be careful because the back, if I made it that much bigger, it would then probably reach half her, um, to the back of her, of her, uh, of her legs. So I don't want the shawl to be that big. So, but I think it's lovely. I think it came out beautifully. And, um, it's made out, the stitches made out of puff stitches and, uh, V stitches. So it's just really lovely and a pico edge. Like I said, the yarn is really busy, so it does not give, um, the stitches do the stitches it's you know you can't really see and appreciate them but it's still very beautiful and I'm really pleased with the way it came out so if my sister Lisandra if you're watching I hope you're loving it I like it let me see and what else is going on well not much uh, preparing for um, as you guys know my daughter's expecting uh, in December, so we are at least I'm planning um, with some of my friends a um, a baby shower for her uh, for the month of November. But kind of just taking a step back and waiting a little bit. I want to make sure that hurricane passes and everything is 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 safe again before we continue to to work with our plans. But um, just kind of dealing with that and dealing with the challenges that life brings us uh, every once in a while and you know the best thing to do is uh, leave it in God's hands and put it all in prayer praying day praying in the night and just um, ultimately leave it in, leaving it in God's hands so um, you know as adults we have walked roads that our children have not walked and we have seen things they have not seen and know things they don't know and and we try to um, educate them as best as you can. But there are times where they must walk those roads themselves. Because no matter how much you tell them about those roads. And those those um, challenges that you may have had as, as a, a young parent or, or a young person. Unless they live it, they don't believe it. So, um, uh, you know. Put them, leave our children in prayer, and that's really all we can do as, as parents and godparents. So, grandparents and parents and godparents, because you know, I also pray for, for my godson as well, my godchildren. So, anyways, but yeah, that's basically all that's happening at a job at the hotel. Uh, once again, um, we are, um, um, code hurricane, which you know, we are meeting just about every other day. Um, getting all the departments uh, prepared for the could what could happen um, being prepared for what could happen be prepared if 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 um, if nothing happens um, just kind of having all our bases covered all our T's crossed and all our I's dotted we have been through this um, once or twice or three times or four times before so um, we're very familiar with it, but you know every hurricane is different, and every scenario is different, and every clientele that comes into your hotel seeking shelter is different. So you know we just have to prepare for it every time. It's part of the hospitality industry. It's part of what we do, and and being in Central Florida, where where if a hurricane comes to the south, they shift up. If people, if a hurricane is coming to the north of us, people shift down. Um, if people are, if a hurricane is, is hitting the central, the part of the central state, a lot of people who live in homes that are not, don't feel safe, come to the hotels as well. So regardless of where the hurricane goes, a lot of times the hospitality industry feels it, um, uh, for shelter and, and, um, especially for those people who, um, who have pets because many shelters don't accept pets. And uh, um, I work for the IHG brand uh, hotel. And um, during these types of situations, 
you know, pet restrictions are lifted and we understand that families have their their furry babies and they need to be with them as well. So so we make concessions for that as well. And um but not so that's my life right now. Um looking forward to um to the weather changing a little bit. It's starting to really show a little bit of the fall feel. Here in Central Florida, we don't get much of a fall or a winter, but in the last week or so, I really could tell that the temperature has dropped dram dramatically. Um, but that just lasts for a day or two, and then we're back to the 90s, high 90s. <clears throat> but anyways, that's what's going on with me. I hope um, you all are having a great time. I hope you guys had a are having a, a, a great summer so far well now it's we're into the fall but I I can't wait to uh, to hear about everybody's fall on the leaves the changing and all that I that's my favorite time of the year is fall so um, I don't know what else oh there's one more thing that I want to mention and uh, I'm going to link her channel down below is uh, Nancy from she's got yarn she's doing a uh, Afghan an Afghan um, collecting Afghans for Boggy Creek Camp. It's a camp for a critical, critically ill children here in Eustis, Florida, and they are collecting Afghans. And she's doing an Afghan drive. Um, I'm gonna hit her channel. I'm gonna link her channel down below so you can refer to it. I don't have a lot of information. I sent her an email, but she uh, hasn't responded, and she probably hasn't responded because I guess a lot of the information is being put in the videos but because I work I don't have the chance to see all the videos a couple of things that I do know is um, the blankets need to be 35 to 40 inches in width and 40 to 50 inches in length okay so what I was saying before I totally lost um, well ate up all the memory in my card and had to pause for a moment was um, about Nancy she's got yarn is doing a drive for Afghans for critically ill children uh, for the Boggy Creek camp in Eustis Florida it is a um, account funded by um, Robert Redford I think no was it anyways it was uh, it was uh, a camp that was started by uh, a an actor and uh, it's been running ever since and they focus on critically ill children and they are are in need of blankets um, once again the sizes are 35 to 40 inches in width 40 to 50 inches in length I believe Nancy from she's got yarn is asking everybody to mail them to her because she's gonna put everything together and mail it or drive it actually to um, to Eustace she also lives here in Florida. I believe she lives uh, north of Eustis, Florida, but she does live um, here. And she's going to collect everything. And uh, before the end of the year, she's going to drive everything over to uh, the camp herself. I believe that she's going to be collecting them through the month of November and possibly into December. I don't know the specifics yet. That's why I'm going to go ahead and link so that you can get more information. But I figured, you know, to make at least uh, two or three uh, nice size blankets and um, send them to her so that she can go ahead and add them to uh, the, the blankets that she's going to be sending in. So if you guys want to join us, please feel free to do so. Um, it'll be great. The more, the merrier. We know that um, unfortunately it's something that we deal with uh, across the world and as children with critical illnesses. And for those of us who have grandkids, children of, of our own, we know what a devastating situation that would be. So anything that we can do to make their stay at the camp or even a little piece of, of takeaway with them a blanket or something handmade with love from most of us here at the at the yarning community i'm sure it's an awesome um opportunity to to bring a smile to a child so with that said i think that is it um hmm, making sure i'm not leaving anything out while i was waiting for to unload the memory in my card i made myself some tea and it says, this is a gift from one of my besties. Her name is also Brenda. Be unique. So it's got a big B for Brenda, but it's actually for the B. 
<laughs> I claim everything as my as my own, you know. If it's gotta be, it means Brenda. If it's gotta be C, those are my initials. Anyways, guys, um, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I hope everybody uh, stays well. I know it's a lot of weather issues across the nation. Please stay safe. For those families of our, of our community here within the state of Florida, please take care of yourself. Be safe. We will do the same. I'm right now texting with my, my kids to make sure everybody's uh, taking the necessary precautions and, and cleaning the yard and doing what they need to do before the storm hits. And um, I love you guys. Thank you again for joining me. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Put a comment down there. Let me know what you think of the Bali Creek Camp. Let me know what you think of the uh, Rosary Prayer Shawl. Um, what do you think about it? Is it something you think I should make more of and make available and maybe in Etsy or, or I don't know. I was thinking maybe that's something that other people may, may like to have. But anyways, let me know anything about my channel that you want uh, to let me know whether you have suggestions advice or something you'd like to see i will do my very best to accommodate um and give you guys what you need or what you want so anyways guys, i love you wherever you are in the world i hope you're having a blessed day god bless each and every one of you guys from the yarny cave peace i love you guys stay cool stay safe stay crafting bye guys bye